together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all racism and oppression, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Hilda is reading our first reading. is from Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honour, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became a source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. And this is the word of the Lord.
according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptised, you will be baptised. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten other disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognise as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. There are a few power issues going on in today's readings. We have not mere priests, but high priests who must offer sacrifice for their own sins, no result. And then James and John annoying the other disciples by trying to bag the best seats in glory. Jesus reminds us his ways are not those of the Gentiles, the world, but whoever wants to be great must be a servant of others. And this meant for him giving his life as a ransom for many. Whilst we all may moan about politicians, you only need to eavesdrop on an MP's surgery or a local councillor's surgery to see how they are servants of others. And today, we are greatly saddened by the recent fatal stabbing of Sir David Amos MP. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. But Jesus, as well as speaking of servant, uses the word slave. What's the difference between a servant and a slave? The amount of freedom they have or don't. Sir David Amos's chosen life's work was to serve others. He had a choice and he made a good one. And I have little doubt that it has come out of his Christian faith. But a slave, has no choices. Last Monday, Peter and I visited Brodsworth Hall in South Yorkshire, one of the many country houses in the land which has been built from the wealth from the transatlantic slave trade. There was an exhibition which explored this entitled Liberty and Lottery named after the ships which transported the slave 
extends from West Africa to the Caribbean. Liberty and lottery. There is a shocking irony in those names. But shocking as the exhibition was, it was nothing compared to the education session which Bishop Anne ran for two hours on Wednesday evening on modern day slavery. More slaves today than there were in the transatlantic slave trade times? Yes, by quite a long way. October is Black History Month, and tomorrow, the 18th of October, is Anti-Slavery Day. So it seems to appropriate to focus on it today, especially as modern day slavery is predominantly part of wider racism. And racism is at root an issue of power of the some over the others on grounds of racial characteristics. And we heard earlier what Jesus had to say to James and John when they tried to lord it over others. It isn't a comfortable subject to hear about in church, nor to preach on, but and I quote from Church of England resources, liturgy has the power to form and shape our values and attitudes and how we live out our faith in every moment. Gathering around the word of God and the sacraments, we are reminded time and time again that we are called to be agents of transformation in this broken world. We are called to be agents of transformation in this broken world. But how on earth do we do that, especially in respect of modern day slavery? Well, first of all, we can break the silence and start to talk about it. We can also join the initiatives which are out there to combat it. Whilst Bishop Anne's session on Wednesday was harrowing, it did offer plenty of simple things we can do and stories of encouragement. Did you know that the largest tra trafficking ring broken up so far in the UK was initially detected by workers in a church food bank in Sandwell? Over time, they got to know two East European clients and became more and more suspicious about their situation and referred it. Did you know that there is a national referral mechanism? NRM at modernslavery.gov.uk. You just need to Google how to refer. Have you got the Safe Car Wash app on your phone? It was promoted by the Church of England at its launch about three years ago. If you use a hand car wash, then log it through the app so the national picture is kept up to date and monitoring can be done by the National Crime Agency. You don't have to do any more than an anonymously log it. And last Sunday's Country Fire, there they broke the silence about farm workers and how some of them are trafficked. There's also now a farm work welfare app. And who has produced these apps, or at least funded them? The Kluwer sisters, a small group of nuns, one of whom was my spiritual director for some years. The Kluwer initiative is the national work of the Church of England to combat modern slavery. It began in 2016 as a three-year project, but now those small group of sisters have managed to find funding till 2030. Let's hope we get beyond that. You may not think 
if you have much power to do anything, then you might not have a smartphone. But we all have purchasing power. On Wednesday evening, we were also encouraged to check our supply chains as churches and as individuals. And actually, one of the questions we asked our lighting contractor was about the conditions in which the lights themselves will be made in. More and more companies are including anti-slavery statements in their accounts. I started to check some out. Marks and Spencers has one, but I couldn't find one for Primark. But in the process, I discovered that HSBC is making it easier for those without a secure postal address to have bank accounts. Not having a bank account makes it easier for traffickers to take your earnings. And an easy one, which we have signed up to as a church and need to renew, is to buy fair trade as much as possible. But to qualify as a fair trade producer and have the magic logo on your goods means you will have been checked out thoroughly that you are paying fair wages and treating staff well. So look out for the logo, and if there is a choice, go for those products. I'll be putting out the poster back in the church for porch after the service. I think many of you know that Rowena works for the Home Office, and in the last couple of the, um, days I've been talking to her about this issue, and it is her team which is now investigating trafficking if people come into the country claiming asylum. She's got a backlog of 14,000 cases to work through. It is a big problem, but more and more it is being addressed. So lots for us to think about, pray about, and put into action. And in doing so, May we follow the example of Jesus to be the servant of all. Amen. Now, instead of the creed, I have taken some of the liturgy from the Church of England resources. I've got three people lined up to come and light candles. I'm going to ask Bob Main, actually, if you could be the fourth, because I'm wanting them from the four corners of the church, and you're sat in the right place. So, would you mind coming forward, those of you who are lighting candles? <coughs> If you come to the front, Bob, if you join Janice on this side, and you've got a spill each behind the candle, then if you take your spills, yeah, that's it, I'm just trying to keep this simple. If he takes one, and then if you light it from, not just yet, just pick it one at a time, Vicky, if you light from there to there, and then we'll pass it along, and I will say some words. So, let us light a candle to remember that God is love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Hang on, technical problems. Yes, it. Bring it lower. <laughs> Perfect love casts out fear. Let us celebrate the love that God has for all his creation. In this Black History Month, let us light a candle to give thanks to God for black women and men in every generation who have contributed to the growth of this country. Let us light a candle to remember those who have been affected by the transatlantic enslavement of African peoples and its legacy, and also as a prayer for those who are trafficked and exploited today. 
Finally, let us light a candle of hope because God is still at work in our world. We believe that love is stronger than all the ills of the world, and we are called to let the light of God's love shine in the world. We're going to find another one. Whilst we're trying to sort the candle, um, would, would you all like to stand and actually we'll just say the short thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father God, we pray for our families and friends, colleagues and neighbours. We pray that in loving and serving those around us, we may be working with you to make the Kingdom of Heaven a reality in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, anxiety and depression. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence, bearing those burdens with them, and always working towards their healing and wellness. We continue to seek your blessing on all who work in our NHS, and we remember all who are waiting for treatment or surgery at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, 
We pray for the repose of the souls of all those who have recently died. We pray especially for MP Sir David Ellis, who was killed whilst working for the community he served. May he and all those recently departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are always more ready to hear our prayers and respond to them in ways which are sometimes beyond our expectations or imagination. Help us to be part of your response through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, We are all one in Christ Jesus, baptised into his church, brothers and sisters in a global family. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share peace by waving to one another and those on Zoom too. And let's see who we've got on Zoom today. We've got Reverend Teresa. Do be seated. Do be seated. Reverend Teresa, now this afternoon she's going to back to her church of her youth in Oxfordshire. Very sadly, it is closing today. It's a small evangelical service, and she's been asked to go and share some memories. Um, um, it's quite interesting because they don't accept women in leadership, but um, things are on the change all the time, aren't they? So we wish to raise the well as she does that. I've got Jenny Roger, and we've got Rosie and Mike, and Dot, and Pat, and Rita, and Janet, and Judith, and Linda, and Jean, and Pauline, and Roger. We are missing Joan Fisher. We said goodbye to her last week as she got into this stuff. And I did manage to see her and pray with her before she went. So, as a family gathered together around Word and now Sacrament, and this is the point where we sanitise our hands. Wise and gracious God, you spread the table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
So together we receive the body of Christ. May it keep us in eternal life. On behalf of us all here at home on Zoom or on YouTube and the church, I receive the blood of Christ. May it keep us in eternal life. We pray together the prayer at the top of page 15. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Set us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few notices. I think many of you are aware that we've had total IT breakdown in the office over the last couple of weeks and we've had to change our office email address. So just be aware of that. Anything for the old one will just be bounced back at home. And we've got coffee after church today, Sandra. Yeah, I'm making the thumbs up. She's going over there now. So that's great. So coffee in the pastoral mm -hmm. centre afterwards. And thank you to those who took our Green Heart Tree um, to um, lobby our MP about um, environmental issues. It was good to hear that we got it there and it made an impact. And thank you also for all the donations for Harvest. The remaining boards are ornamental. If anyone would take some, would like to take one or two home with them um, and um, have at home, please do so. Um, I don't think they're poisonous, but they just throw on sort of more um, skin than inside. And we, and also those who've donated to the Malawi Fund as well. Our harvest is continuing this Wednesday. We've got a short harvest service at 11.30 at Mainsfield Community Garden. And they usually offer really nice refreshments as well. So do come along and the weather looks set fair. It can continue that way. 11.30, Sunday morning, Wednesday at Mayfield Community Garden. Some of you may be aware that St. Bridget's Church was at last consecrated yesterday. We send them our prayers and good wishes. We've got a pottery workshop coming along in the hall on Thursday the 28th of October. Let Rowena know if you'd like to go. And there are lots of events for Black History Month, including this afternoon, a service at St Andrew's Stadium. If you're not a Blues fan, just go to your rooms and go. Um, it's just good to know these things are happening um, with an ecumenical service. Um, so it's good to know that these things are happening. 
And there is also a service this afternoon at the cathedral, Pause for Hope, for all affected by cancer at three o'clock. GCC, we're meeting this week and we're going to meet in the minor hall, the upper hall in the pastoral centre and the agenda of minutes went out yesterday evening. Thank you to the Holy Gusters who came in this week and gave us a good spruce up. And thank you to Linda Powell who has dropped off some Bible reading booklets. So if you'd like a Bible reading booklet, the daily reading, they're by the exit. And we're going to sing now. We're going to sing in 684, Thou whose almighty word, chaos and darkness heard. In 684. 695, 695, 695. What a... 695. I've got the wrong number written down. 695. Thank you for your vigilance. To God be the glory. I think I've looked at the wrong week. That's next week. Next week. <laughs> so I, I came in last night to set up and looked at the lessons and thought, I've got a sermon written on completely the wrong lessons, but realised I was looking at September and October. Clearly need more holiday. 695. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 